Hallelujah, hallelujah. Before we get going too much, I want to kind of go into a couple of announcements that, that, that we're looking at here at the Remnant Revival Center, some stuff that we're doing, some uh, places that we're going to be going now, and, uh, and stuff that we're going to be leading into. We want prayer to cover some of this. We really do. And, uh, and I haven't asked permission, so I might get in trouble for this one, but I'm going to share something that's, that's on both of our hearts that we're wanting to do and we're planning on reaching out to this week. But we just have a heart for not the people that's inside of churches, but the people that are outside of churches. We want to start helping them understand who they are in Christ. People that are, that are having a hard time. And one of the things that we're looking at doing is we're looking at trying to figure out if we can run a Celebrate Recovery system out of Remnant Revival Center here and more. And so we're, we're anxious about that, and that's something that we're looking into. And I want you to be praying over that, because there is a lot of people that need a touch from God. The, the, the addictions that people are fighting, it doesn't matter if the addiction is social media, it doesn't matter if the addiction is drugs and alcohol it doesn't matter if the addiction is pornography if it's homosexuality whatever it is there is a ton of things that that, that people are being overcome with that the only thing that can fix it is the king of kings and the lord of lords all that's going to happen if we medicate is it just suppresses. It quiets it down. And the only way to truly overcome is through the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, and I want us to understand that we need to grab hold of that inside of our churches. It seems like it, Mario Murillo had said this Wednesday night on Firepower, and it's so true because it's something that's been in my heart. Churches are going for nothing but numbers, but we should be moving for disciples. We should be leading for discipleship. The one thing I have to say, I've started discipling. I have three men that I'm discipling solo right now. And I'm at the point now to where I'm like, you know what? I think I want to start a men's group. I ain't even got men in the church right now. But I'm ready to start a men's group. And I don't care if they're where they're coming in from. But I want to disciple because as I disciple, I start getting a heart of Christ that's even stronger and deeper. My faith starts to rise. My, my, I see His mercy and grace in a total different area. And I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for Him because that's what the Great Commission is to do is for us to go out and to make disciples. It's not to go out and make pew warmers. This has been so deep inside of my heart. And the more and more we get going, the more and more we do it. This is something we want. Kathy has a complete different heart than I do for Celebrate Recovery. But we know that we can help. And so we covet your prayers over that aspect of the ministry right now. And here in the next week or two, I think it's going to be the weekend after Thanksgiving. Um, we might surprise everybody and do it sooner. But we're going to start doing a Wednesday night table talk. And so what the table talk is going to look like is we're still, it's going to be a Wednesday night service where everybody's, a, everybody's invited to join us. And Kathy and I are just going to set two chairs up here at this table and we're going to have a table talk about issues that people are dealing with and that way we can help disciple on Wednesday nights and so it'll be the the more that we have here the better conversation that we could have to be able to help people in the places they're at we're going to try to set it up to where we can combat uh, uh, 
messages on the social medias, but we haven't gotten that far yet. We're not that high tech and high fancy yet, so that might be a long time coming. I have no clue. We're going to try to figure it out as we go, but I just, it's something that's on our hearts right now that we want to do. We want to get that going, and then the last thing is on Friday nights at 6 p.m., we're going to start opening up the doors, and whether people want to come or not, I do know that we are going to be watching a church service live on the screen from another church. And so we just we just invite you to come in for that. He's having some powerful services. And the, the, the pastor's name is Todd Coconado, but we're going to live stream in his Friday night services here at the Remnant Revival Center and more. But, but I am going to tell you the name of his church is Remnant Revival Center also. And I like the name. I took it. We are still our own identity, but he is a, he's starting to turn into a mentor to me. And so there is a connection there, but, but, but Remnant Revival Center is ours, and that Remnant Revival Center is his. He's in Tennessee. We're in Oklahoma, so it is kind of weird. He is trying to claim us, though, from what I'm understanding. So I just I love it. I love him, and I appreciate him. And he is a, he is a true man of God that preaches some truth, and he puts a lot of stuff in it that I don't. But uh, that's it. That's part of it. And I do a lot of stuff that he don't. So that's just that's part of who we are. We are all individuals. I can't be him and I can't be anybody else that I know. I only can be me. And that's what we need to understand is we need to figure out who we are in Christ so we can be that person. Amen. Hallelujah. But now that I've got all of those little announcements out of the way. I want to dive into the Word of God tonight, or to this morning. But I want us to, to, we're going to turn our Bibles to 1 Peter 5 is where we're going to be, be at today. But I want to talk to us about walking vigilantly. We need to be walking vigilantly inside of our lives inside of our spiritual life, and inside of this world right now. Because this world is having a hard time. This world is, a, we see it crumbling at the edges right now. We see it falling apart everywhere. But what's funny is the deeper and deeper you get inside of Christ, the less and less worried you get about some of this stuff because all you know is the Bible is being fulfilled and all that means is we're just that much closer to getting to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't want to be turned into one of those preachers that's a doomsday preacher. I don't want to do it. But I also don't want to be a skinny jean fog machine uh, gummy bear preacher or tickle me Elmo preacher. I've thrown about three different pastors in with those phrases right there. But I don't want us to be, be tickling ear pastors. I want us to be preaching the truth. And as we preach the truth, we want the obedience of God inside of every aspect of our lives. We want every His We want to be obedient in Him in everything that's happening with our with our leadership inside of the church. We we're we need to we're we're growing. But as we get leadership, they're going to have to be under the accountability of the Holy Spirit. And if they're not going to be under the anointing and under the obedience of the Holy Spirit, then I don't want them to be a leader inside of our church. Because what's happening all too often in a lot of churches today is all of these, these leaders are coming in and they're, they're allowing people to be leaders, but they're still fighting and battling some of the basic principles of Christianity. And so what happens is it's allowing compromise inside of the leadership of the church. And whenever we have compromise inside of the leadership of the church, there's hypocrisy there that comes up there's a, the 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 church starts bowing to the society even though the 
the truth is coming out of the pulpit, the leadership is bringing it down. And I just said, that's on our hearts. But we need to be walking vigilantly in every aspect of our life. We need to be walking vigilantly in our spirit walk whenever we're at work. We need to walk vigilantly when we're walking in our family. We need to walk vigilantly when we're walking in our church. We need to be vigilant when we're awake. We need to be vigilant when we're asleep. We need to be vigilant in everything that we do. So I want us to start reading I'm going to read the full set of passage and then we're going to come down and we're going to break it down line by line and verse by verse like I like to do. But in 1 Peter 5, we're going to start reading in verse 5 and it says this, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders, yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may God, may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal Glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and settled in you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you just hide me behind the cross today, Lord. I pray that you would just anoint my tongue, my mouth today, Father, to speak the words that you have to say. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would use them to penetrate the, the lives of your people today, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just allow all of the, the George to fall on deaf ears, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just touch this message today and anoint your people freshly today. In your name, amen. I want to start off by, by going to the first verse. It says, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to elders. Ephesians 5 and 12 tells us to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. I know he's talking about the younger people here, but in the next set it says, Yes, all of you be submissive to one another, clothed with humility. No matter where we are, no matter how old you are, no matter what it is, we need to be hum hu hum humble, thank you, with everyone around us. I need to be humble to some of the young youngers. I need to be humble to people that's older than me. We're called to be humble. We're called to do something that's completely different. It's very easy to get wrapped up inside of this life and, and have pride roll up inside of us. And when pride rolls up inside of us, it enables it. It, it does not enable us to be humble the way that we need to be humble, but because we're trying to exalt ourselves on a different level that puts us as God and not God as God. God. In order for us to do this, we have to humble ourselves. He goes on and says that, that, that be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He's going to resist the proud. He's going to resist them. He doesn't want it because it, the Bible tells us pride comes before the fall. We need to understand that pride is going to be our fall. We need to be humble also. 
There comes a point inside of our lives where we have to understand that everything that that happens inside of our lives is not just because God allowed it to happen. Sometimes it happens because we put ourselves inside of that situation. Sometimes it happens because we made a bad choice with our free will. Free will is one of those things that people blame on God all too often. Or they blame it on the devil. The devil isn't about everything. He isn't isn't living inside of our lives every moment. He's not omnipresent like our God is, but he just, but we often put ourselves in situations that we don't need to, and we open the door for him to come in and do stuff inside of our lives that we don't want him to do. And then we blame it on God because God wasn't present, but we weren't in connection with God whenever we were in that moment. We need to understand that if we are going to be in Christ, then we don't need to be in the world. Proverbs 3.31 kind of breaks down into this. Whenever he said in 1 Peter that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble, he was referring to this set of of scriptures in Proverbs 3.31-35. It says, Do not envy the oppressor, And choose none of his ways. We don't need to envy the oppressor. We don't need to envy our neighbor. We don't need to envy our boss. We don't need to envy other people. Because when we envy them, we're trying to choose their ways. And we need to understand that God's ways are better than man's ways. We look, at America is so wrapped up in materialistic stuff that they automatically long for all of those things. But we shouldn't be choosing none of those ways. We shouldn't be choosing the stuff that's going to lead us away from God. We should be choosing the stuff that leads us to God. We need to understand that that there comes a point when we have to take accountability for the actions that we do. Because we have free will and we need to understand what that free will is going to do to us. And he goes on in, in Proverbs and says, For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. The perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. I know oftentimes we say that homosexuality is an abomination to the, to the Lord because it says it in multiple areas in Leviticus. It says it in Romans. It says it in different areas of the Bible. But let's read this again. The perverse person. The perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. I'm feeling led to do something right now. And I just, I, I want to dig into that just a little bit deeper, I believe. Because I believe that the Lord's about to show you something as He shows me something. But when we look up the word perverse, it, it says this. Showing a deliberate and obs obstinate desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often in spite of the consequences, is what perverse means. We often look at it as a sexual thing, but perverse is actually something that is anything that is immoral, anything that is immoral. If God has told you not to do it, it is perverse and it is an abomination to the Lord. Smoking that crap pipe is an abomination to the Lord. Turning on the, turning on the, the computer and going to websites is an abomination to the Lord. Watching that R-rated movie, listening to that rap song, we need, to, we need to fill our heads with all of the good stuff and none of the bad stuff. 
We need to continually lift up him. We need to understand that just because it's on a gospel station doesn't make it gospel. We need to have some discernment inside of our lives so that we know that if God, it is not pleasing to God, then we need to pull it out. We need to get rid of it. We need to separate ourselves from it. And the only way we can do that is to know and have discernment. The only way we know and have discernment is to be in the Word of God for ourselves and not just when a preacher opens it up and reads it. And he goes on, and I love this set too. He says in the next set, but his secret counsel is with the upright. His secret counsel is with the upright. LeeAllenHoward.org said this, God's secret counsel must be listened in on. Listened in on. It communicates God's wisdom, information, and insight that others do not know. The wise and upright person who walks in the fear of the Lord will be privy to God's secret counsel. We need to understand that God's secret counsel, we should be longing to be inside of God's secret counsel. Because when we're inside of God's secret counsel, He's speaking life inside of us. He's speaking something new inside of us in those moments. He's giving us a fresh breath. He's giving us a fresh ability. He's giving something different that he's he's not giving everybody else because can I tell you what he he wants to say to me is completely different than what he's going to want to say to my wife because my correction is not the same as my wife's correction what 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 leads me is not the same thing that leads my wife we all have to be accountable for the secret counsel that we're getting. And if we're getting secret counsel, we're either going to be getting it from the enemy or we're going to be getting it from God. Because if we're not getting it from God, then we're allowing the enemy to lead us in all the different areas of our lives. Because can I tell you, our mind, who we are, we are an infallible person. We are a good, we were created out of dust. We can make nothing, but God can make everything that was made that was made. He gives us the knowledge to be able to do it, but ultimately it's coming through Him. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper here in just a moment, but we need to understand that God is the way we need to go because if we don't go towards God's secret counsel then we're allowing ourselves to run our mind we're allowing ourselves to run every aspect of our life and that's where the where we open the door for the enemy to come in and and fill our head with all of these falsities and all of these things that are not true I better press on. But he goes on and he said, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Man, I'll tell you what. If you know me and you know this ministry right now, you know that we're living out this verse. I have to say this verse to myself all of the time. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I've just got to humble myself and realize that I can't do anything on my power. All I can do is continue to be obedient and preach to the people that he has or the people he doesn't have. 
All I have to do is be obedient and say, you know what, God, I may not understand why we're sitting in the place that we're at. I may not understand why why we have all of these chairs that are completely empty right now, but but." A, a following online, but all I know is he is about to do something because he is going to exalt this ministry in due time. He is going to exalt this ministry in due time under the obedience and the humility that we give to him. And it's the same thing side of our lives. If we are humble in our lives, if we are humble in our in his presence, if we are humble whenever whenever it seems like the world is coming against us, whenever we are humble, whenever people start yelling and attacking us, whenever we're humble in all of those things, then God is going to enhance that. God is going to point that out. God can use that to show that not all Christians are hypocrites. Not all Christians are, are what people say, but he's going to exalt it in his due time. We live in a world where we want it here and we want it now just like Burger King. We want it our way right, right away. We're living in a world where we want it right now. We want to be able to throw it in that microwave and say, ding! Fries are done. But he says, you know what? We need to put those inside of a crock pot. And that ne- chicken needs to stew for a while. It needs to soak for a while inside of there. But we live in a microwave world with the crock pot God. And we need to understand that there's something different. He tells us to cast, in verse 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. That any time I read that, I automatically think about Matthew 11, 28 through 30, where it says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He wants us to have a life that is that is light and burden free. How many of you are ready to live a life that is burden free? I know I am. The only way we can do that is to do what he says and take his yoke. And allow him to take the burden. And allow him to do the things that only he can do. And here's where we're going to get into it today. He goes on, and he said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering, the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Here's where I'm going to lose some religious people. Here's where I'm going to to take and start rocking some worlds today. Because we're living in a world where, where the religious are telling us that the enemy has no control over us. The enemy has no power over top of us. The enemy can't do anything anything to us because we're washed in the blood of the lamb because we're washed in the blood yes we are washed in the blood but it tells us to be sober and village vigilant because our adversary the devil walks about like a roaring seeking who he may devour what i want to point out here we sang a song earlier about the lion of judah 
And I say this all the time, but the, but the enemy can create nothing. All he is is the ultimate deceiver in the ultimate liars. The Bible says he is the father of lies. He's basically a copycat. That's it, Kelsey. But, the, but we need to understand that he is, he is roaming about. And what I want to highlight to you in this set right now is he is like a roaring lion. He is like. He is trying to show that he is God. He is trying to show that he has power that he actually does not have. But if he's showing that he has power that he does not have, guess what? He still has some power. It's whether we choose if he has the power or not. So to say to someone that he has no power, that's saying that they, have, they don't have any choice over it. And there's going to be some here that say, well, that's not scriptural, Pastor George. That ain't scriptural. Well, let's go back real quick to Luke chapter 22. Verse 31, it says this. And the Lord said to Simon, 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 we're going to read 31 and 32. Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen my brethren. I have read this so many times. And this has never stood out to me until here recently. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you. We look at the book of Job. What happened? Satan went to God and said, Hey, have you considered your, your, your guy Job? Have you considered him? And God allowed it to happen. Well, evidently, it's going to happen here. I, wa I want to dive in a little bit inside of this set. He said, Simon, Simon, or Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. The word sift in the Greek is siniadzo. Siniadzo. And what that means is by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. So Satan asked that he may inwardly agitate you, Peter, to try to make your faith on the verge of overthrow. If we go to the verge, that means that we can go all the way over. We need to understand that, that, that he asked to be able to sift him, to be able to do something. If you take the word sift and you break it down, it means to pull the, the bigger portions out of the lower portions. To pull the good from the bad. To sift them. So he wants to sift to see if, if Peter is going to fall out. He's going to sift to see what's going to happen with Peter. If he's going to turn like Judas did. If he's, if he's not going to turn like Job did. If he's not going to turn like David did. If he's going to turn like Saul did. We can go through the Old Testament and hit all of the people that, that, that was sifted, although it may not say that God went and asked, but to say that God or that the enemy has no ability over us, then we're saying that we're better than Peter. I don't know about you, but I am not better than Peter.
And here is that next part. But I prayed for you. I've heard many preachers preach over that, that, that set. God loves us so much that he's going to pray over us. Jesus loves us so much that he's going to pray over us. We take, we take John chapter 17 and we see where he prayed for himself, for the disciples, and for all the believers. He prays for us. But here's the part that I've never seen anybody grab hold of. They just read over it every time. And these are red letters, not George letters. That your faith should not fail. And here it is, when you have returned to me. That means Peter has left the grace of God. I don't know about you, but that's what I read out of that. If Satan can turn someone away from God, then that means that he has some power over them. That's why he's roaming the the lands like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. We need to understand that we need to grab hold of who Jesus really is and what he's done for our lives. We need to quit saying, well, just because it says it in the Bible, it's true. It's completely true. But is it in context or out of context? Because we look at where Jesus was tempted. Satan came to him biblically. And Jesus rebuttaled him biblically. We have way too many people that are twisting scriptures out of context to make their, their unsaved friends feel better. All that's going to do is give them a false sense of security. The only thing that can give them a true security is the Holy Spirit by turning our lives away from everybody else and putting our lives with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Putting it in alignment with Him. That's what we need to be doing. We need to quit. That's exactly right. We need to quit living our life with one foot in the world and one foot on with Christ. I saw an analogy over just that with a preacher a couple weeks ago, where he took two ladders and he put them up on his pulpit, and he started walking up the ladders on both sides, and then he got to one point to where his legs couldn't spread no more to go up, and he said, I have to choose which way am I going to go. Am I going to go up with the world, or am I going to go up with Christ? But I am going to have to come off of one of those ladders. And we have got to realize that if we're going to be riding the ladder of society, then we're going to be walking away from the ladder of God. If we're choosing the ladder of God, then we need to walk away from the ladder of society. We need to understand that the ladder that we choose is what we choose for the rest of our lives, for eternity. We're either going to be in the ladder that's leading us to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, or we're going to go up the ladder that's going to turn into a slide like in chutes and ladders and shoot us right down into the pits of hell. Hallelujah. But I just, I, I feel this so deep inside of my mind right now. I know that I, I had went on Facebook and, and had said that, that, that we were going to be breaking all kinds of areas of Peter's life apart. And then God hit me with this scripture and it, it kind of took a little bit of a different twist. And I'm plan, still planning on doing that other message. But I, I have to tell you right now that we need to choose today which way we're going to go. We need to choose today which way God is leading us. We need to understand that we need to grab hold of what he wants to do inside of our lives. We need to stop doing church as normal. We need to stop doing church the way it's always been done. We need to understand that if we grab the truth of the word of God, we need to sift it. 
through our discernment and say, Holy Spirit, what have I been taught that is wrong? Holy Spirit, what have I been showed that is off? Holy Spirit, where have I been polluted inside of my mind for the Word of God? If we feel that we know everything about the Word of God, then we, are, we have a level of pride that we don't need to have. And again, pride comes before the fall. We need to understand that if we grab hold of what God is doing inside of our lives, that He is going to show us stuff that we never saw before. I was raised where tongues was a thing of the devil. People didn't pray in tongues. People didn't do that. That was a, that was not that was that's something that was for the disciples. That was something that ceased. And I remember going into multiple Pentecostal church services as a as a kid. And whenever the Holy Spirit would break out, George would break out. He would break out and run out the back door because that was of the devil. But I still remember that one service where the Spirit was breaking out and my mom was sitting on my left side and I had that aisle seat that I like. And I started to get jittery. And as I got up to run out the back door, my mom grabbed a hold of my arm and took me right up to the altar. And that man of God came up, put his hands on my, upon my head. I hit the ground and I've been okay with tongues ever since. He knocked the tongue straight in me. I have no clue who that man of God was, but he knocked the tongues into me. Into well, not the tongues into me. He knocked them. He knocked them uh, into the ability of my understanding that they are possible, because I wasn't. I wasn't filled yet, but I started to learn. And if we think we know everything then we need to dive back in. Because can I tell you, there's some stuff that people say that I don't agree with, and it just stirs inside of me. And then I start seeking the Lord inside of the Word of God, and He'll either confirm me or He'll confirm them. But he's going to confirm something. But if we are not open-minded enough to allow him to speak into us, then we're restricting and we're regulating what the Holy Spirit can do inside of our lives. We need to quit restricting the Holy Spirit inside of our lives. I heard a preacher say, if you read something and it, and it makes you feel weird inside, then you need to study on it until you don't feel weird no more. Because evidently, you're being convicted about something because you don't agree with it. If you don't agree with it, study it to figure out why you don't agree with it. Because evidently, there's something that's got to change inside of your life. There's something that's got to change. He's, he is not... He is not going to accept us just, well, He is going to accept us just the way we are, but He doesn't want us to stay the way we are. He is a way maker, not a way keeper. I need to say that one again. He is a way maker, not a way keeper. He wants to make a way for us. He doesn't want to keep the way that we've always been going. He wants to make us different. He wants to make us new. He wants to make us more about the kingdom business and less about business. I don't know how he is going to orchestrate everything that he has downloaded into Kathy and I's mind about about. Remnant Revival Center. I don't know how he's going to do it. He downloads stuff in my head. He downloads stuff inside of my wife's head. 
And every now and again we'll say it, and most of the time it bear witnesses with both of us. And both of us are looking at it going, how, Lord? I don't understand this. It isn't for me to understand. It's for me to walk into the path that he has. It's not our job to understand why he wants us to do what he wants us to do or how we're going to get where he's telling us to go. But we have to walk in that path. We have to walk that way. We have to realize that there is only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. Kelsey, go ahead and come on up. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. I don't remember his name, but I heard an interview this week. And Isaiah Lavar was, was interviewing this guy. And he said, hey, tell the viewers or tell the listeners about what it's uh, about what it's like to have only one way to the Father. And he said, it's kind of like you're going somewhere and you ask for directions and they say, well, you need to go over to Main Street, turn right, go on up a couple miles and then you're going to get to this other street and you're going to turn left. And then on this street, you're going to turn right. But whenever we go, we get to Main Street and we say, you know what? I don't feel like going that way. I'm going to go the other way. Then the other streets are not going to be there. But can I tell you? He can change you off of Main Street, send you over to Broadway, and back the right direction. You can get back there, but the only way is still through the sun because heaven is on a cul-de-sac, and you can't come in the back way. You have to come in the front way, and that's only through the Son. He tells us in verse 10, But may God give you all grace, for He calls us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus. He calls us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, that you may suffer you, though you may have suffered after a while, perfect, established, strengthening, and settled in you. As we battle, as we fight, all they're doing is strengthening in us. All that they're doing is perfecting us. All it's doing is establishing us. So as the devil rolls about, roars about like a roaring lion, or roams about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour, as he is testing us, as he is sifting us like he did with Peter, as he is doing all of these things, then guess what? It's actually working against him because if we stay firm, just like Peter did, because Jesus told him in the end, that, that, that whenever he returned, strengthen my brethren. That means that his strength was up because of the test of the enemy. Can I tell you, your strength is going to rise because of the test of the enemy. Your strength is going to rise because of what he's doing. Your testimony is going to be because of what the enemy is going to do. You're, you're, you're going to be able to make disciples that you weren't able to do before because of what G Satan has done to you. Because now you have something new inside of you that's never been there before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
to him be glory and dominion for and ever. Amen. That's what we should be longing for. As I, as I come to a close today, I want to I wanna highlight a couple little areas that we need to walk vigilantly in the Lord. We need to walk vigilantly in the world in everything that we do. We need to walk vigilantly in the world. I don't know why, but I'm having a hard time with that word right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting too many L's in there. But, to, but we need to walk vigilantly. We need to understand that, that, that the more we walk this walk, it's going to get harder, but it's going to get easier. We're going to be tested in ways that, that, that we've never understood. Or that we can even imagine. But what I want to point out is I want to point out one little set that he said inside of here. That nothing that we go through resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So this is not, there's another point that says there is no sin that can come upon you that's uncommon to men. The devil can't make anything new. All he can do is repackage and reform and represent it in a different way. But he, God, is the ruler of all. And he's saying, walk vigilantly in me. Walk vigilantly inside of me, and, and I am going to humble you. And I'm going to exalt you. And I'm going to put you where you need to be. But you're going to have to take some time. It, I'm going to put you in a crock pot. I'm going to put you in an area right now to where you need to stew a little bit. You, I need to make sure that you're ready. I need to allow the enemy to sift some stuff out of you so I can encourage you and enlighten you and encourage you and enlighten you and, and inform you. And exalt you exactly where you need to be. I need to take that pride out of you. I need to take all of these things out of you that doesn't need to be here. I need to take that, that, that heart of stone and turn it into a heart of flesh. Is what he's saying to us. He wants us in a new way than he's ever had us before. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing. Lord, we thank you for, for the abilities, Father, that you've given us, Father. Lord, we thank you. We, we count it an honor to be sifted, Father. Lord, that, that, that you could try us and test us and do all of those things, Lord. That we may be exalted in you and not exalted in ourselves. Because, Lord, if we are exalted in ourselves, Lord, we're exalted in our society. Lord, we're exalted in the world. Lord, we're exalted in everything that doesn't matter. But, Lord, if, we, if you exalt us in you, Lord, if, if you sift us and pull all of the world out of us, you sift us and pull all of the impurities out of us, Lord, you set us on a new righteousness in you. Hallelujah. Kelsey, I want us to sing this song for just a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Fuck. 
want you just to worship him as we go through this next verse and this next chorus. I want you to tell him how much he means to you. If you're here today, watching online or in person, and you say, you know what? I need to walk more vigilantly. I need to walk more vigilantly. I, I'm tired of walking blinders on. I'm tired of walking in the ways of the world. I'm tired of walking the ways that I've always used to be. Can I tell you this? He longs for you. He wants you to walk more vigilantly inside of Him. Great. If that's you, I, I don't care wherever you're at right now. I just want you to lift your hands. And I, I'm, I'm lifting my hands. I want to walk more vigilantly inside of Him than I ever have before. But if that's you, I want you to lift up your hands right now. It, it doesn't matter if you're in your living room, wherever it is. If you're driving, keep one hand on the wheel, please. But I just, uh, I want you to lift your hand. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you be with these right now, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just allow them to walk more vigilantly inside of you, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just start to give them a level of discernment that they've never had before. Lord, I pray that you would just take and change who they are, change their DNA, Father. Lord, I pray that you would, you would graft them in deeper than ever before, Father. Lord, I pray that they would walk vigilantly inside of you sober father lord that they would that they would see the enemy coming at them a mile away father lord they would see him perched in the in the hidden brush so that whenever he he starts to figure out how he's going to attack lord they can be on the defensive they can take the sword of the spirit and get out and start wielding it and ready to take him out father Lord, I pray that you would just touch them right now in your name. Amen. If you're here and you say, you know what, or you're online and you say, you know what, I don't know him the way I thought I did. I don't know if, he, if he's the Lord of my Savior. I don't know that if, it, if I was to die today that I would go to heaven. I don't know that. Then I just invite you to repeat after me, gracious Heavenly Father. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I humble myself at the foot of the cross today. Lord, I ask you to come into my life. Change my heart. Change my mind. Fill me, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just take everything that I've done wrong, Lord. I, I confess it to you right now. I I. Uh, I don't want this sin. Lord, I don't want this judgment over my life any longer. Lord, I want to be new inside of you. Change me right now. Encompass me right now. In your name, amen. Just because you say that doesn't mean that you're a Christian. You have to truly mean it. There has to be a true connection. 
But if you if you said that prayer and you feel you mean it, I want to connect. I want to I want to be able to pour inside of you. Message us. Let us know. Because there comes a point that that that, that prayer it it. it it gives people a false sincerity, but what do, or false security, but what it does do is it gives people an avenue to start speaking to the Holy Spirit. It gives people an ability to change who they are. And I invite you, if that's you, message us, let us know so that we can get you a Bible and we can start walking you through it. Hallelujah. We love you. We appreciate you. We hope to see you soon. And if we can do anything for you, just message us and let us know so that we can be praying for you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We will see you next week.